This is Oliver Lucanus from Below Water. Today I want to look at three dwarf cichlids. You will see some other fish, including cardinals and other tetras in this habitat. There are links in the description for videos we made for cardinals, rumminos, and many other fish. I want to focus on the three dwarf cichlids to show how space is shared in a habitat with similar cichlids. Today's three fish species are from totally different genera, but they closely share a relatively small space. There's a fair amount of interaction between them and even a somewhat symbiotic relationship between two of them. The habitat I am showing you today is in Venezuela and this footage is old analog stuff taken by mini DV cameras. But I think it's still very interesting. This place is home to Cardinal Tetras, Rominos, Axelrodia, Hephesobrucon, Nanostomus and many other small fish you will be familiar with, as well as many other cichlids, especially in the deeper water. This habitat and many others are shown in detail in my book Amazon Below Water. If you would like to purchase a copy, please get in touch from my website or try the link in the description. Our first dwarf today is the checkerboard cichlid, Dicrosus gladicauda, the near identical sister species of Dicrosus filamentosus. The main difference is that gladicauda has that long filament only on the upper lobe of the caudal fin, while filamentosus has it at the top and the bottom. I will be using odd measurements here to avoid this whole metric imperial thing. Adult checkerboard cichlids live in this small creek at a depth of ankle to knee deep water and the males hold loose territories while the females roam around. The males typically try to hold an area the size of a dining room table and spar with other males that enter their territory. The fights are pretty harmless overall. When they see another male or a female, they flash their fins and colors, but usually just for a second. The adult females are easy to recognize by their bright orange ventral fins. Most of their time, they are foraging along the bottom. Note that these fish are basically feeding constantly, and you can see now why wild-caught checkerboard cichlids are often near starvation and very difficult to acclimate in the aquarium. Often they are just too far gone. It is vital that you have some small-sized live food ready to fatten the fish back up when they arrive. Daphnia, white worm, black worm and even fruit fry larvae all make excellent foods to get them back to feeding normally and once they have a full stomach, they will often adapt to flakes and high quality pellet foods. Here the decrosses look for microinvertebrates and in the process, they often pick up leaves and try to flip them over. The beneficiary of this behavior is a dwarf Crenicicla species. They follow around the much smaller decrosses, but I have never seen any aggression between the two species. When the decrosses flip a leaf, the crinicicla home in on shrimp or insect larvae that are too large for the checkerboards. The female pike cichlids are the ones with the bright red dorsal fin and the males are the larger fish that lack the red coloration. Some of the females of this crinicicla also have a red and white dorsal fin with a spot in it. They are really similar to crinicicla regani and notophthalma but both of those two species occur in the Brazilian Amazon. This group of dwarf pike cichlids where females are around 2 inches or 5 centimeters and the males are up to 3 inches or 7.5 centimeters is actually quite large with a bunch of undescribed new species such as this one. The males look very much alike but the females are much more dimorphic. Most of them just have a solid red dorsal fin while others have an ocellus, a fake eye spot in the dorsal just like female Crinicicla regani or Nothophthalma, just like many African cichlids like Pelvicochromis crubensis, most pike cichlids have the females more colorful than the males. Females that are ready to breed often get bright orange, pink or red bellies and then swim around the males in this S-shaped curved body position to get them to follow the female to a suitable nesting site. In a river like this, where rocks are relatively rare, a suitable nesting site can be the underside of a root, a piece of wood or even a leaf that is partially stuck in the substrate and creates a small cave. Once a nesting site has been chosen, they will lay their eggs on the roof of the cave and usually both parents guard the eggs and fry, while the female 
rarely leaves the immediate vicinity of the eggs or the larvae. Both Epistogramma and Dicrosis like the same sort of places as the pike cichlids when they breed, but the structures can be much smaller because their females are just over an inch or three centimeters long. Especially the Epistogramma are extremely cryptic when they are breeding, selecting nesting sites deep in the riverbank with highly structured bottom. The pike cichlids, relatively capable of defending their nest, are less picky and actually prefer a site with more current, where the fine particles have been cleared off the sand by the flow. In the aquarium, these dwarf pike cichlids need a lot of room. Just like their larger relatives, they can be quite aggressive. An aquarium of at least 200 liters or 50 gallons is ideal for a pair of dwarf pike cichlids from this group. Better yet, choose a much larger aquarium with tank mates that can handle their aggression if they do breed. Fast-moving, hardy fish such as Leperinus or Mitinus, the silver dollars, would be ideal. The third dwarf cichlid is Apistogramma megaptera, but their foraging style is different. They don't usually turn over leaves, and so the Crenicicla rarely follow them around. The male Apistogramma have much larger territories, nearly double that of the checkerboard cichlids, and they spar much more aggressively when the neighboring males enter their territory. The Epistogrammas look for areas with much more structure, and they will usually breed in areas along the riverbank that are much more complex than the deeper area that checkerboards like, places where the females can more easily defend the fry. The male Epistogramma even chase juveniles from their territory, while the checkerboards usually totally ignore immature fish. The dwarf pike cichlids may pass by the Epistogramma without paying much attention to the way it is foraging. The Epistogramma will eventually breed in burrows along the riverbank, and while the male helps defend that territory, most of the work is done by the female that now has turned bright yellow and is defending her fry against including tetras and the occasional juvenile cichlids. I assume this fish is Epistogramma megaptera, the bright-binden Epistogramma, similar to both Brevis and Piaroa that occur in this same general region. These brown-bodied and high-finned fish occur in the middle Orinoco and down all the way Brazil in the Rio Negro basin. They always prefer very soft water with no measurable hardness, acidic pH between 4 and 6 degrees, and water temperatures of roughly 25 Celsius or 75 Fahrenheit. The checkerboard cichlids and the pike cichlids are much less picky and occur in a much greater variety of habitats. You can also note that I have not seen Ramirezi in this kind of habitat, but their biotopes are not far from here, with warmer water and more open savanna and palm trees, not this kind of forest stream with dense tree cover. You will have noticed many other cichlids here also, mostly juvenile Mesonauta insignis, the flag cichlid, and juvenile Heros liberifer. There are a wide variety of predators, such as juveniles of the three peacock bass species that occur here. Acestrohinchus barracudas, wolf fish of the genus Hoplias and Hopley erytrinus, leaf fish, piranhas, and some predatory birds such as kingfishers. Because there are no rocks, hard structures such as this fallen tree are a premium location for the cichlids, and many species will shelter together here. Between these more permanent structures lie open areas of sand with few plants, not safe for the small fish to cross. Most of them move along the riverbanks, where a dense mass of roots from riparian vegetation, fallen branches and palm fronds and leaf litter offer more cover for small fish. There are also adults of another larger pike cichlid from the Saxitalis group here. When this was filmed, we had seen this fish for the first time and named it small teardrop because there is also a large species in the Rio Atabapo that has a red teardrop under the eye. This medium-sized pike cichlid is also common here and I am able to show you the nest. As often, the male immediately fled when I approached the nest, but the female stayed behind to defend her eggs. The eggs are laid under a fallen palm frond that is just loosely lying on the open substrate in deeper water. Here, current is strong enough to carry off the fine particles deposited along the edges. The female immediately attacks her own reflection in the dome port of the camera to defend her eggs. Ah, uh, I better flip this back over to leave her to guarding the nest. Well, I hope you enjoyed a look at these three dwarf cichlids sharing a space in the Venezuelan habitat, even if the quality of this video is not ideal. Let me know in the comments and make sure to like this video and share in some forums.